had any experiences in your business with people that have had reactions to chemicals? Because I know when I started my mold business, what led me to change all of the techniques that are utilized in mold remediation today was my experience dealing with some very unique ladies that had developed a sensitivity to chemicals. Uh, absolutely. Uh, multiple chemical sensitivity is a phenomenon that's out there and, and it's growing by most people's account where you can have normal levels of a given chemical uh, and get response from these people, much less introducing additional chemicals uh, into a home and you can run into uh, real problems. We used to ask all our customers to leave. In fact, we would require that before we sanitize the system that they had to leave the house and stay out for as long as four hours. So this chemical wasn't something you'd want to drink? Uh, no, no, I never wanted to try it. Okay, Is it, was it labeled as poisonous? Um, I don't know that it was labeled as, as, as poisonous. There were certain, uh, uh, you certainly weren't invited to, uh, to consume it straight up oh, by long shot. Uh, and, uh, 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 and, and of course, like I say, we used to ask people to leave. Well, so now I understand that NADCA has instituted some new changes and now they're, uh, they're no longer uh, recommending that chemicals be used at the end to sterilize the ducts. Uh, yeah, there's been a uh, um, sort of moratorium put on uh, sanitizing systems at all. Uh, and the recommendation is, is strictly a thorough cleaning. So if I understand it correctly, a moratorium means that they're actually stopping NADCA duct cleaners, telling them, don't do this anymore. Well, that, that's the uh, recommendation, as I understand it, from NADCA, that it's, it's not recommended anymore. Uh, I think in large part because they're not sure of all the effects that could result from the... Well, now you had mentioned that where the two ducts go together, there's a folded metal seam. How would you go about cleaning that if you're not utilizing a chemical sterilant? Well, yeah, you'd have to rely on brush systems and uh, on high pressure air to try to blow it out. Uh, but obviously sometimes you're cleaning ductwork and you're 25 feet away from it. Um, the idea of being able to be real careful or meticulous around those seams is pretty unlikely. I see. Well, that's exactly the reason why we developed the Green Clean Carpet and Duct Machine from Prozone Solutions. And due to my experience working with people with multiple chemical sensitivities and uh, my developing the multi-step family safe system for treating mold, I have been utilizing a form of activated oxygen in the form of high shock therapy treatments to unoccupied spaces when we clean up or finish a mold project. However, uh, today we're going to be talking about how to sterilize the ducts utilizing a chemical-free uh, gas out utilizing activated oxygen, otherwise known as O3. And this machine produces massive amounts of O3, about 25,000 milligrams an hour, and it forces it at high pressure into the duct system. And what that will allow it to do is to circulate this gas and gases can get into tiny little places, into the nooks and the crannies and the crevices that exist where those ducts go together and in and around the coil and the condensate pan and the blower motor and the cage and all of those things where the liquid-based disinfectants being put in at a supplier return register opening may not eventually make it. But gas has the unique ability to penetrate into tiny little spaces. And the greatest thing about it is when you're done and you turn off the unit, within a half of an hour, all that's left is pure oxygen. Good for the people. <laughs> and Paul, have you used, ever used activated oxygen or do you know anyone that has in their businesses? Not um, for ducts, but for mold. Well, yes, I, I know a lot of people that use activated oxygen. In fact, uh, I've used activated oxygen and I'm real careful not to use it in uh, occupied spaces. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, uh, but in those unoccupied spaces, there are a great many applications for, uh, for O3. So, Paul, if I told you that I had developed a system that would allow you to completely saturate the duct system, the furnace, the blower motor, the condensate pan, and the coil, and we could do it all with a form of activated oxygen that would leave behind no poisonous residues, yet would kill viruses, bacteria, 
like E. coli, viruses like uh, swine flu or avian bird flu, and uh, even uh, mold, and even the hardest thing to kill, mold spores. And it did it all in a chemical-free way, utilizing a gas that got into the nooks and crannies far more effectively than a liquid-based disinfectant. Do you think that could uh, revolutionize the duct industry? Well, certainly it'd be a lot more thorough than using the, uh, the liquids. In fact, uh, when we would apply the liquids as a mist from the registers, oftentimes by the time it would ever get back to the furnace area, the heart of the unit, uh, it would be dissipated or gone, used up. Wow. Uh, and you're pulling empty air, so oftentimes the furnace area maybe never got sanitized at all. Where, uh, uh, you know, knowing where, where you start this thing is actually starting at the heart of the Well, place. that's right. That's where we're going to go next, is we're going to take a sneak peek inside the actual use of this machine to sterilize some ducts that were recently cleaned. And what we do with our duct machine is we put the activated oxygen directly into the heart of the system, right at the trunk line of the cold air return on the unit, which lets it be liberally distributed throughout the entire system and even the house. And remember folks, all this is being done while none of the three P's are present. No people, no pets, and no plants. So, let's uh, move on over to the furnace room and we'll take a look at how this, how easy this system is to actually utilize and how thoroughly effective it, it be, has become.